Gabriel Barbosa, once a flop in Europe, is now on almost every Premier League club's transfer radar. Gabriel Barbosa, the 23-year-old Brazilian striker, is in demand again after a few prolific seasons with Flamengo. Rumors of him joining a European club are increasing every passing day. Wolves, West Ham United and Manchester United have all shown some kind of interest in him over the course of his Flamengo career. In this video we will take a look at Gabigol's career path, style of play and possible transfer moves. Share your thoughts down in the comments below. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Born and raised in the state of Sao Paulo, Barbosa's talent was first noticed at 8 years of age when playing futsal for Sao Paulo, he scored all six of his team's goals in a 6-1 win against Santos. From there, he was quickly integrated into the Santos youth system, where he went on to score more than 600 goals and became known to all at the club as Gabigol for quite obvious reasons. 16-year-old Gabriel Barbosa made his first team debut for Santos against none other than Flamengo in 2013. The Brazilian media often touted Barbosa as the next Neymar, so it seemed very fitting that his Santos debut was actually Neymar's last game for the club before his illustrious move to Barcelona. In fact, in a similar fashion, and after showing early signs of the exciting and skillful attacking play he is now renowned for, Gabigol sealed a move to Italian giant center in 2016 for a fee of just over £26 million. But his Italy adventure was not that successful. What is the reason he failed to have such an amazing display in Inter Milan? One of the reasons for that is the lack of shots during that period. He is a striker whose consistency in goal scoring very much depends on shot volume. However, he can't consistently score goals from rare moments in a game. In Inter in the 2016-17 season, he had 9 appearances as a sub with 10 shots. Despite his great assistance in Flamengo's defensive matters, his discipline on the pitch is not great, he has been booked with 18 yellow and he was sent off the pitch two times. Most yellows are not for fouls or dirty play, but for extreme celebrations. He has created a cult with his celebrations and goals, but in a big club, this kind of behavior becomes risky and totally unnecessary. All this transfer talk is fair, with Gabigol in unbelievable form since joining Flamengo and showcasing his talent over why Inter Milan had paid a hefty fee for him in 2015. He has been in incredible form, successfully fulfilling the role of the main goalscorer of the Copa Libertadores winners. Even more than that, he has shown his leadership qualities and willpower in his spell in Flamengo. Gabigol has led the line for Flamengo over the past four years and is already the fifth highest goalscorer in the club's history. Having initially joined on loan from Inter for the 2019 season and notching an astonishing 43 goals in all competitions, it's no wonder the Brazilian champions made his move permanent, in doing so he became the most expensive player in Brazilian football history, with a price tag believed to be somewhere in the region of £15 million. Despite his amazing statistical record in his last four seasons in Flamengo, it can't be said that Gabigol is a pure striker. When playing for Santos he was used as a winger too, causing comparisons with Neymar. Also, he was often used as a second striker and he had the experience of playing in that role for Flamengo too. He is a left-footed player, and during the game, he tends to drift wide to both flanks but primarily to the left. However, he often drops deep into midfield and occupies different areas on the pitch, very similar to Roberto Firmino's movement in Liverpool. Getting the ball from the defenders and linking up the play between the team is one of Gabigol's main jobs in the team. Usually, Gabigol tries to position near the touchline, from where he can either continue pushing through the center or attack down the flank. As previously mentioned, Gabigol also drops deep into the middle to link up the play, create overloads, destroy markers and wreak havoc on the opposition's defensive setup. He sometimes picks very unusual positions for a striker. Flamengo have been a dominant force in the Brazilian league for quite a few seasons now, dominating basically every team from a tactical standpoint and even finished on their highest ever 90 points tally, and one of the big reasons for the team's success was their relentless work ethic. Their average passes per defensive action, which measures how many passes a team allows the opponent before making a defensive action, have been 7.9 since Barbosa's time there. Gabigol was also taking part in the joint task, 
pressing the opposition. Statistically, he has made 1.4 recoveries per game with 78% of them being in the opposition half. It shows that he is making great defensive contributions from a striker position. Moreover, he makes 0.43 interceptions per game, not cutting off passes that much, but still doing the job. He is not restricted to his position even when the team is defending, which allows him to make decisions on his own, occupying the right spaces in the defense. In terms of his passing accuracy, he completes 80% of his passes, which is very good for a striker, and again this proves my thesis about his great link-up ability. Gabigol has got everything to be a great striker, and his first spell in Europe may be the turning point in his career for good. Gabigol is still only 25 years old, and he has his whole career ahead of him. Will he be able to shine in European leagues again? Share your thoughts down in comments below. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel.